morning, Kellyanne. Good morning, Allison. Thanks so much for being with us. This is obviously a busy, busy day, as it always is. Lots of breaking news. What do you, uh, I want to ask you about um, Adam Entis' reporting that he's just shared with us from the Washington Post that this goes the furthest we've seen to connecting President Putin of Russia to actually giving the directive to interfere in the U.S. election and to try to hurt Hillary Clinton. What's the White House's response to this? Well, the president has said previously, and we've got confirmation now from Jay Johnson, from Adam Schiff, from Dan Coats, from Jim Comey, from Mike Rogers, that there's no evidence of collusion, number one, and number two, that this didn't have an impact on the electoral result. And I think it's very important to show no nexus has been proven between what Russia or any other foreign government tried to do and the actual election result. Really, the only person making that case prominently is Hillary Clinton. And you've got everyone saying that there is no nexus, that not a yeah. single vote was changed, and we're going to stand by that. We know that right. Donald Trump but won fairly and squarely 306 electoral votes. Yes, it had no. nothing to do with interference. We know that as well. But what about this new reporting, that there are three dozen um, high-level officials that say that they can connect President Putin with giving instructions to hack the DNC computers and to plant fake stories. What, it, what is the current White House doing about this? Well, Allison, the president has said previously, and he stands by that, particularly as president-elect, that uh, he would be concerned about anybody interfering in our democracy. We saw a lot of, of people interfering with our democracy mm -hmm. by saying he couldn't win here at home. But mm -hmm. I, I really am struck by former uh, Homeland Security Secretary Jay Johnson's testimony earlier this week, which you covered extensively, where he seemed very frustrated that the DNC refused the help of the DHS because DHS knew that the DNC was vulnerable. Yeah. Um, the RNC, I'm sure, was vulnerable, but had those safeguards and protections in place and had a different result. And so it's, it's very clear that even in the Obama administration, there was concern. There yeah. were actions trying to be taken. But the question for the DNC is, why were you so arrogant in not letting the Homeland Security that, of your own administration help you? That's fine. But my question for you is, what is the White House? What is President Trump now doing to prevent Russia from doing this again? Well, this report is new, and we'll discuss it with him later. But he's been very clear on the record that he believes in any type of uh, numbers of measures to make sure that democracy flourishes it and that our voter integrity is intact. Right. Such he, in as? fact, has an entire commission I on I mean, that. against Russia, what is he doing specifically to try to stop this? Allison, I realize that we just like to say the word Russia, Russia to mislead the voters, and I know that CNN is aiding and abetting this nonsense as well, but Kellyanne, you've asked him the same question three times now, and I'm answering it. And you're not answering it, it Kellyanne. The, yes, I am. He's the president of the United States. And what's he doing? He has said, he has said very clearly that he wants the vote, voter integrity and yes. the ballot, ballot integrity to be protected and what because action against is he any taking? type of interference at this very moment, at this very second? Yes. Oh, uh, yes, because we have nothing to say about Russian collusion or affecting the electoral outcome. Kellyanne, Those rabbit holes did not bear Kellyanne, fruit. Kellyanne, I don't understand what you're doing in terms of trying to talk about collusion. I've answered the collusion. question four times. You I've haven't told us what times. action is the White House doing to stop Russian interference in elections? The White House is, the president has met with his national security team many times. He has an initiative or a commission on voter integrity. Mm -hmm. And he himself has used the power of the bully pulpit to express his resistance towards any type of outside interference. Uh, mm -hmm. So, the, you know, again, I've answered the question several times. But is this that is an ongoing process. You're, 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 you're dealing with a very new report. So we will look at that as well as yes, we do all Yes, fair enough. All this different... is a new report. But this, the idea that Russia interfered has been obviously around since now we know before the election. Yeah, Jay Johnson seemed very frustrated with his own DNC about it. I agree and, with you. And in fact, he said that there was great concern that if they did anything openly, that they would challenge the integrity of the election process itself. And now, look, you've heard from this new report that President Obama was afraid that, that Vladimir Putin would up the ante, would ratchet, it, would ratchet it up. But that's, I understand, you haven't read this report yet. That's fine this morning. But still, this has been going on for months. So the president talking about it, do you think that he's done enough to sending a signal to Russia to stop this? I think the president has been very clear on how he feels about this issue and many others. Do you know, Allison, he also has a very full roster. I know that CNN and others don't want to cover it. He uh, just, just mm -hmm. last week 
open up a $100 million investment in apprenticeship programs. 90% of people who go through these skills certification apprentice programs are employed in short order with an average of $60,000 salary. Where's the reporting on that? This, this week, just back here, Secretary Price and I met with Obamacare victims. They're real. They're suffering. Yeah. They've been left behind out of the Affordable Care Act. If you want their information, I'll provide it to them. You can interview them. Yeah, He's I helping with job I mean, creation. The markets love his presidency. There's, there's so much real people impact happening here that doesn't yeah. get covered on the altar of Russia. Well, I mean, Kellyanne, I think that a, a lot of people think that Russia trying to interfere in our democracy is a big story. It, it is, but there are other stories, and I know we're all capable of covering many of them. You have a 24-7 cable news outlet yes, that certainly we, can fill lots of content. I'm giving you great story ideas because we hear from people every day. They want mm -hmm. him and certainly in these special elections people have rejected this Russia obsession yes, because they the, like the fact there's job creation, regulation is being rolled back. Yes, Healthcare we do is cover be more free obviously the jobs more. report, Kelly. Oh, anyway. And I know that everyone's a producer and everybody has ideas of what um, CNN should cover, but Kellyanne, I think that I'm part of helping. the problem, thank you, is that uh, the president has not given a terribly full-throated um, uh, announcement that he believes that Russia interfered. He says things like, they may have, it may have been China. Allison, so we're just asking that we're having the same conversation through six different uh, semantic differences. Um, that's fine. It's your show. You can ask me what you want, but I will just remind you as politely as I possibly can that this entire conversation was irrelevant to the voters in these four special elections. Everybody tried as hard as they could to make it about something other than job creation, the rollback mm -hmm. of draconian and Byzantine regulations, the unleashing of entrepreneurship, including if these if these small business owners, and I was one for over 20 years, get to 15 to 20 percent tax bracket, that will be monumentally transformative yeah. in our country's economy. This is important things that people want to focus on. Yesterday, the Senate released their health care yes. legislation. I'm the glad president's making good that on up. that promise. Let's talk about he that. I do want to talk about okay. that. Let's move on to health care because you're right. That does affect every single person in America and they're very interested in this. During the campaign, the president, uh, then candidate Donald Trump, said he would not touch Medicaid and Medicare. The latest CBO score, which this new Senate bill does not change, says that it actually would cut $800 billion from Medicare. How does the president explain that change? Well, what he's doing with Medicaid, well, what the Senate bill is doing with Medicaid, as I read it, is giving more flexibility to the governors. And the states will have a choice. They can, they can go for block grants or they can go for the current situation. And that will be a choice that they make based on what they know of their populations sure. in their states. There's but also what about no, work we, no work requirement can be forced, Allison, under Medicaid on the elderly, on, on pregnant, on the poor, on, on the poor, on the non-able-bodied. Mm -hmm. uh, and but so there's more flex promise, where he promised that no money would come out of it. But, but remember, you're calling a cut something that is being reorganized over time in a way that allows states more flexibility and still, and still guarantees people the coverage that they are accustomed to. And not really, uh, Diane. I mean, if you cut 800 billion out of it, then it doesn't guarantee the same coverage. Allison, um, would you concede that the Affordable Care Act has not worked for all Americans? Because I think we're forgetting why we're even doing this in the first place. What about the 20 million Americans just last year who opted out of this wonderful thing called Obamacare? Six and a half million of them mm -hmm. opted to pay the tax and the penalty rather than get, than get Obamacare. What about everyone all the people knows, that look, we Kellyanne, meet with Everyone here? knows that it's not perfect. That's, that's true, and I won't fight you on that point. But it's, about It's not that affordable promise, and it's not sustainable. Fine, and you but, have insurance companies. What Even this that? week, Anthem Inc. pulled out of Wisconsin and Indiana in most of the markets there. I, I think I they're left in one perfect. county in Wisconsin. And lots of well, Democrats say that we should work it's on not fixing, working. fixing Obamacare. But what about the president's promise? What about that campaign promise about no cuts to Medicaid and Medicare? Now that's changed. But, but only in Washington would something like this be called a cut, where over time there are protections in place for the disabled, for the elderly, for the poor, for the non-working poor, for children, money. for pregnant women. And it's going to allow states to decide what they need to help those in need sure, with less in money. their states. States will get no, less money. No, not necessarily. It depends. It really depends on the state. It depends on the situation. out of it. You, you, you keep on giving that one statistic without reading the entire bill. I read the bill. Yes. Um, I'm not Nancy Pelosi. I decided to read it ahead of time. And so, uh, before, and I'm sure the senators are. 800 billion is being put in it. somewhere else. No, Allison. What's going to happen is 
There are many different funding mechanisms at play here. What, what governors will do is they will have an opportunity to either get block grants or, the, or stick with the current situation. And they, as you remember in the House bill, late in the game, there was an additional many billions of dollars infusion of cash to guarantee that very narrow slice of the population who went with 63 days of non-continuous coverage and also happened to reside in a state where that, that state will opt out of that type of Medicaid funding. So there are many different protections in there. I just don't I just don't want everybody scaring people to think that they're going to lose their benefits and their coverage without giving a full accounting of everything that this includes. It includes uh, very generous expansions of health savings accounts okay. funding. Why is that important? Because it gives people more control over their health care spending. It even allows spouses to do something called yeah. catch up. If they investment. have money to put into this them. Is, this is well this is very important. Those are employees so this could be employer sponsored. You and yeah. I get employer sponsored benefits. One hundred and seventy five million yep. Americans essentially do. Yeah. Other people get government sponsored benefits. We're trying to help those who are left okay. out of it. The plumbers, the hairdressers, the people who need uh, the small business owners who need to pull together and assume share the cost understood. and share the risk. And Kelly, I thank I appreciate all those points, but I do I know that you're on a, a time a, a tight time constraint, so I want to get to the next topic, and that is the tapes. The audio tapes that the president admitted yesterday didn't exist. Why did the president 42 days ago suggest that there might be audio tapes of his conversations with James Comey? So the president made very clear in his two tweets yesterday and in an interview early, that was aired earlier this morning, Allison on Fox News, that um, he doesn't have tapes. He didn't make tapes, but, right, but why with all the talk about, but he left open the possibility. He he left open the possibility that they may exist. There's so much surveillance and unmasking and leaking, as you know, going on. Uh, there have been conversations he had early on in his administration with heads of state that were leaked uh, by, uh, who knows, I guess, intelligence officials, but so, we don't know. So the president sure. thinks Everybody that should he be has concerned. conversations in the White House when he's having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with somebody that somebody might be taping that in the White House, he thinks. Well, he's just left open the possibility based on his own words and based on what's oh. happened in the past. But on the issue of Jim Comey, did he really need that extra push and incentive uh, to be truthful? Well, all we know from Comey's testimony is that he's a leaker, is that he specifically gave an individual, a, a private citizen, information, um, his own After memo recording of, of a tweeted. private conversation he had with the President of the United States, his FBI director, yes. and specifically leaked it to a friend uh, with, the, with the expectation that it would trigger a special because counsel. Because of the President's tweets. It was the President's tweet that set this ball in motion. Why did the President... We don't know President, why it was. I don't know why James, Jim Comey, Comey testified, testified untruthfully the week before oath. that. He said it was the tweet that so upset him, the idea that the president suggested that there were audio tapes. But, Kelly, I mean, my question is, why didn't the president clear this up 41 days ago? He cleared it up in due course, but I, I but want to why? go back to what but you why? just said. But I think but it's very important what Kelly you just Ann, said about on. the just FBI first director. First answer this question, and then we can why go to your point. Tweet, Kelly, why, did it, Kelly, why was a tweet like truth serum for him? That's very concerning. Okay, is but that why, what you're suggesting? why did we live this charade for 41 days that there might be tweets, I, there might not? We did, I mean, sorry, I that there might be tapes, there might not. We what? didn't leave any. Sh we didn't live any charade here. We're busy creating jobs and but rolling back why regulations. Didn't the the stock market and the confidence numbers. Love answer it. definitively about whether there were audio tapes. He answered definitively yesterday that he has right. not made such tapes. He doesn't have sooner? such tapes, but there could be. Why didn't he answer it sooner? Why is he always on your timeline? In because, other words, it's Kelly always. Kellyanne, this gets back to exactly why what didn't you he were tweet talking about this? About, why didn't he say that? You, why isn't he on this the person timeline? Who said? Why does the media not want to talk about all of the other things that we are engaged in? Had he the day after he tweeted that said, "Okay, you wouldn't have covered the job creation and the this. regulation." Kellyanne, you don't think that this has eclipsed some of the news cycle? No, I don't. I don't. I think everybody wakes up every morning and makes a choice as to what they're going to cover. Mm -hmm. And look, if the media are not always going to acknowledge their responsibility mm -hmm. to be fair and complete in coverage, at least acknowledge your role. Allison, you've got a premier position to help Americans understand what is going on here. You could be the connective tissue with veterans so they know there's a new White House hotline they can access. They know that for the first time in decades they are looked upon as the same seamless patient mm -hmm. to the Department of Defense, to Veterans Affairs. The President today is expected to sign the VA Accountability and Whistleblower yes. Protection Act. I mean, there's so much going on here that people need to know about. Understood. And we and actually we just did a big important no. veterans story uh, which we've been out Thank in front you. of on CNN. But Kellyanne, I don't think that you're answering this question. The, the president played a, a cat and mouse game 
for 41 days about are there audio tapes or are there not audio tapes? And was that a good use of all of our time? Well, you choose to spend your time on your show however you wish. He's well, busy but doing I think many this, things here. Look, this, he hosted this bilateral the meetings. Bigger, understood, and we've covered those. But this gets to the bigger question of, are we supposed to take the president seriously when he tweets things? Are yes. those honest tweets? Yes, of course. And first of all, he uses an entire social media platform to connect directly with mm -hmm. the public. He cuts out the middleman, and we know that right. the middleman doesn't always like that. Yes. But this is the democratization of information. Uh -huh. People get all the information but at the same hard, time. But, uh, but Allison, but it's hard for us to know when to take them seriously. If that, if that suggestion, or that some people think it was a threat, he better hope that there's not audio tapes. If that wasn't a serious tweet, no, what we should we to no, make we should that? we should always take. President seriously, just like too many Americans foolishly took seriously President Obama when he said, looked them in the eye and said, if you like your plan, keep mm -hmm. your plan. If you like your doctor, keep your doctor. That cost a lot of people a ton of money, mm -hmm. great angst, and, and health care, frankly, health yeah. coverage, if not lives. Um, Kellyanne, so, why are the press briefings not being covered on camera? from the White House? Some are. Some are covered off camera, as they've been in other administrations. Um, I'm all for full and fair access to the White House. I, I think that if there are people who want to make a name for themselves, increase their speaking fees by asking the same question 50 different times and never asking about job creation, never asking about how we're tackling the opioid crisis, never asking about what we're doing for veterans so, and military families and job seekers so and job creators. So that's what you're worried about. You're, you're, you don't want to I'm not camera. worried about anything. You're I'm not worried about anything with respect to that because this is a very, very busy, very accessible press shop all day long. Members mm -hmm. of CNN and others ask this press shop. I'm not part of press and comms, but I support their mm -hmm. efforts. They are asked to provide information, to mm -hmm. update information, and, and you have sure. very hardworking men and women in this press shop doing that all day Understood. long. And the so press we're briefings, just used don't, to it the press briefings don't need to be on camera to be useful to the public and to be useful to our press corps, Allison. Why? Yeah. Because you'll get the same information. And, and by the way, I find the richest points of the entire press briefings that Sean or Sarah or others do to be at the very beginning when they're literally reading what the president and the cabinet secretaries mm -hmm. are doing and the vice president that particular day, it gets such paucity of coverage compared to the, the mm -hmm. Q&A. So I think you, that one of the things is that when the press um, secretaries can't answer the questions about what the president's thinking or if he believes that Russia interfered or what he's thinking about the tweets, when they say, I haven't talked to the president about this, that is what is confusing and frankly there is accountability that then shows up to the American people on camera and it's helpful to hear what the press secretaries can and can't answer. Well they're being truthful when they say that perhaps they haven't had a specific conversation with the president that day on that issue but I just answered your question the president did say I believe his president-elect in January when he read the report it's very concerning and that he thinks other people hack this country as well try to hack this country hack into our system as well mm -hmm. and and that he of course i told you probably six different ways as best i could at the beginning of this conversation that the president himself has said he once saw integrity at the ballot box and but we also know we just yep. don't want to confuse the viewers today especially those who are detractors and love to just hear the word Russia for no good reason mm -hmm. with no evidence right, to prove anything that you don't think that there's nothing any good nothing affected the election result Russia today there's, there's no, no there's no effect on the election Russia result today. The 70,000 votes that people love to crow about in Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, sure. and Michigan. But the fact. Nothing. Nothing to do with Moscow. Everything to do with Macomb Shh. County, Michigan. Yes. And I, we would love to hear exactly what the president is doing to make sure that Russia never interferes in our I'll democracy. I'll make you a deal. Again. Make you a deal. You'll see that over time. And we would love more coverage on the opioid crisis, on job creation, on the regulatory well, rollback, okay. on I mean, entrepreneurship. Fine. In our, in our How about some fancy seconds, graphics of that. what the market thinks? How about the Home that. Builders Conference, the Manufacturers right Conference, the S&P, the Dow Jones? Let's do it right now in our waning seconds, since I know you're being pulled away. What exactly is the president doing to fight opioid addiction? So we at the uh, several things here at the White House, he has put full force in effect. He and the vice president have established the White House and commission on opioid mm -hmm. addiction and the drug yep. crisis. It is headed by New Jersey Governor Chris Christie. Right, it's a so bipartisan we understand commission, a commission. Yes, that and includes a, a former Congressman Patrick Kennedy, mm -hmm. who's been a very outspoken, recovering addict who fights for mental parity, mental right. health parity here. We have North Carolina Governor, Democratic Governor. I understand Governor you have an Roy impressive Cooper. commission, but the reason I ask a lot is of because money. this GOP health care new bill actually does nothing 
to address that's the opioid and that's crisis, not fair. and it that takes is away so money not fair. from this all White sorts House, of that's rehabs. Not fair. Say that they are very disheartened by what they see in this new bill, and that it's not helping them. Allison, it actually helps no one to peddle the the false rumor that this health care bill does quote okay, so nothing to help. Okay, so beyond hold the on. commission, what are you Secretary, doing? Secretary, hold on. Secretary of HHS Tom Price and I have traveled around, talking to law enforcement, first responders, faith-based employers, the families who have suffered, the, the wonderful recovery stories of those who have successfully on, undergone treatment. And he has also given out the SAMHSA grants, close to a half a billion dollars in SAMHSA grants to these, to these different states. Every state mm -hmm. received according to their need and their population figures. There is funding to help combat this, but it has to be a combination here mm -hmm. of interdiction, of prevention, and of treatment and recovery. And you don't hear a lot about treatment and recovery. You never hear the success stories. Yeah. You can fill up every seat there in Yankee Stadium, Allison, and that approximates a number of Americans who will succumb to drug overdoses this year. We know. Everybody, year. every single person I, that I know has somebody connected there is money. Is there is attention. There is a, there is an all. Yep. There is a multi cabinet uh, 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 assault on this. It's DOJ, HHS, it's DOE, okay. so we can educate our youth okay, that, on this. I mean, goodness, the the, the 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 opioid addiction is its gateway to heroin use, yes. fentanyl, car fentanyl. We, we're just so happy that we have bipartisan juice behind this. We had a meeting with 10 yep. United States senators here recently. Six of them were Democrats, and I was very happy to see that. We, we are happy to hear that. So, Kellyanne, we would love to talk more about Thanks this. Thanks to the platform. And I'll we, be back. Good. We would love to have you back to talk more about this. Thanks so much for being Thanks, here. Thanks, Allison. On Take care. New Day.